Greetings free thinkers, welcome to the Hogcast. How are you doing today? I hope you're doing fine. I certainly am. Okay, what do we have for you on today's episode? We have three clips to watch, all revolving around Minneapolis and the Brooklyn Centre, Derek Chauvin and so on. And here we have the Minneapolis Mayor, who has made a very ridiculous, stupid and inflammatory statement regarding the outcome of the Derek Chauvin trial. Now, when you watch what he has to say, try to keep in mind that elected officials, so-called leaders, should not be speaking like this, right? This is dangerous rhetoric, and it's all you ever seem to get from the left. Then after that, we've got a, a, footage, a piece of footage, a short piece of footage, from Brooklyn Center, showing everything boarded up, graffiti sprayed over everything, and this is that woke utopia they always wanted. And then finally we have a clip of the judge refusing to sequester the jury even after Maxine Waters on film, you know I did the video on it yesterday, encouraging her best friends in the whole world in these radical left organizations she was down there even though she's a representative from california why she was in minneapolis i don't know but she was there telling them that they have to get quote more confrontational so let's get into these clips if you haven't yet please like the video subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell and share this video around i am gonna start re restart my bit shoot channel my rumble channel and i might go on to odyssey YouTube is sectioning off and shadow banning conservative commentary channels. You know that. We know that. But they're destroying their own platform by doing it. It's really such a shame. So you'll find me on those as well. The links are down below. Okay, let's go. Okay, so over to Mayor Jacob Frey. Never trust a Frey. As we await the verdict, there are several inescapable truths. Over this last year... Our Twin Cities have experienced a barrage of trauma, all culminating with this trial and then the verdict. There's been pain and anguish, anger and frustration that is undoubtedly acutely felt by our black and brown communities. Regardless of the outcome of this trial, regardless of the decision made by the jury, there is one true reality, which is that George Floyd was killed at the hands of police for being here today. So that was the clip, uh, only 40 seconds long, but the point is that is incredibly divisive and irresponsible language from a leader. We know that the people he's talking about are very easily manipulated. Um, they seem to fall for it time and time again. This rage bait rage based politics um let's watch again because there's some points i want to make as we await the verdict there are several inescapable truths over this last year our twin cities have experienced a barrage of trauma all culminating with this trial and then the verdict there's been that barrage of trauma he's talking about is entire city blocks being burned down to the ground and looted by the usual suspects from the usual groups, Antifa, BLM, and so on. And he's trying to justify that. This speech of his is him justifying it. And not only that, he's trying to lay the groundwork for justifying any actions that the usual suspects commit if they are found not guilty that's why he's saying if shelvin's found not guilty that's why he's saying that regardless of the result of the trial regardless of what the jury in this is legal terms if he's found guilty he is legally guilty if he's found not guilty he is legally not guilty but that's not good enough for the democrats that's not good enough for mr jacob frey here the mayor of minneapolis minneapolis i, th I believe he was the guy who was kicked out of the group last year. Remember when he went there to <coughs> to patronise them and to say, yeah, I'm with you. This is Antifa and BLM. Remember in Portland, Ted Wheeler did the same thing. Yes, I'm on your side. And they turned on them. They turned on them. 
Not once, but twice. Both of them. Yet here they are, still siding with the mob against their own electorate, against the homeowners and business owners who have been burnt out, looted, and now feel extremely unsafe by people who, let's be fair, they did elect, so you kind of get what you elect, really, if you think about it. But the people who got elected have their own private security. The police are there to protect their houses, whilst they call for the abolishment of the police so that your house can't be protected. In pain and anguish, anger and frustration that is undoubtedly acutely felt by our black and brown communities. So he's under the pretense that if you look like me, if you happen to be of an Anglo-Saxon descent or any white group descent, you can't feel pain or anguish. anguish. It's like we're not human to, to the Democrats. It's like, for example, think about all the homeowners and business owners who lost their dream, their livelihood. Remember that sports bar who he just opened, he lost everything. Uh, what about them? What about their anguish and pain and suffering? They're law-abiding people. They're not out looting. They're the taxpayers. What about them? Regardless of the outcome of this trial, regardless of the decision made by the jury, there is one true reality, which is that George Floyd was killed at the hands of police. What an irresponsible statement. What a stu And what gets me is that the police and the police in the United States of America are the only police left on earth that I respect. Why are they still protecting this guy? What, if I was the chief of police in, in Minneapolis, I'd say to hell with you, you're on your own. Why are they protecting this guy? So this guy is saying that he's the mayor of the city. He's saying that regardless of all of the evidence presented by the defense in the Shelvin case, some even by the prosecution, because the prosecution did several things unintentionally that damaged their own case. But most people, the plebs, the lemmings, the normies, they haven't seen anything from the defense. Partly not their own fault, because the mainstream media hasn't shown them a shred of evidence the defense has brought forwards. They haven't shown them the medical reports. Most people know nothing about the fentanyl. Irresponsible beyond belief. The mob has power. And what does the mob do with that power? Let's take a look at the next clip and you'll see. Okay, so here we have a short clip of Brooklyn Center. These were all shops, some big label brands, but mostly small, either ordinary family people who brought a franchise license, or even just little stores owned by families who had a dream to open their business. So you've got all of the boarded up things, you've got um, spray paint on there, just foul mouthed rubbish, talking about resistance, um, I can't read most of it but there's one up there, <gasps> excuse me, about resistance, there's a middle finger there, the middle finger is, if you encapsulated how the left, the logic of the left, the way they interact with planet earth, the middle finger would be it if you was to draw and distill it down to an image. Things about pigs and so on. So yeah, it's only eight seconds long, but this is obviously a concerned resident who wanted people to see. So look, this is what Democrat leadership gets you. Vote blue no matter who, guys, remember? Vote blue no matter who, eh? All of the shops looted, destroyed, graffitied, boarded up. You know, when I was a teenager and I first started getting into um, current affairs and politics, this was in the early 2000s, at the beginning, the very beginning of the culture war, when 99.9% of the people didn't even know what was going on. They were gullible beyond belief. And that was even most of the people on our side. 
And my vision, I often, because I've got foresight, I've been gifted with the amazing gift of foresight. I have many flaws in life, and personally I have many flaws, but one of my gifts, because we all have gifts, we all have weaknesses and strengths, one of my strengths is foresight. And I used my foresight to imagine what society would be like in 50 years. And I imagined a whole country of things like this. Boarded up, rubble everywhere, just no freedoms left, everyone's scared, everyone like, you just can't say anything or do anything, you know, without bringing down the wrath of the mob who, I pictured them driving around in like, flatbed trucks with weapons on the back the mob control like a uh, militia uh, control that's what i envisioned the future would look like and i don't mean far future i meant like within my lifetime and it seems to be going that way it really does doesn't it and finally we have the judge in the shelving case um refusing to allow the jurors to be sequestered which is to have them defended, basically, to have them more anonymous, so they couldn't be found by certain unscrupulous individuals, organisations, the usual suspect groups, and of course even the mainstream media, who are of course the political wing of the Democrat Party now, and they would go and try and find who these people are. They already destroyed the life of a man, a paramedic, they went straight to his door, but that was allowed on Twitter, wasn't blocked or anything. He went straight to his door because he um, committed the terrible crime of putting a ten dollars, one zero dollars, into the defence fund of Mr. Ritten Rittenhouse. Right. So his life's been destroyed because of that. The his the paramedic, the the ambulance. I don't want to use the word company, but the organisation. Not sure how exactly it's run over there, whether it's private health company he works for or whatnot. But they're looking into firing him. They're looking into him now. They're going to go back all over his social media posts, I should imagine. So the jury is scared. They know the mob's in control of the city. The police are being defunded. Their morale is low and getting lower. The mob... Is, has been funded. You know BM, B, BLM and Antifa have been funded. Funded. Enough for their leaders to buy four houses in majority white areas. Luxury houses. But those stories got banned on social media. So the jury don't want their lives being ruined. The mob wants them to make, quote, the right decision. Not what is legally binding, not what the jury of his peers, Chauvin's peers, believe based on the evidence. Oh no, they want a mob-run kangaroo court. And the judge, even after Maxine Waters poked her evil nose in, is still refusing to sequester the jury. We're, and we're concerned about their safety because of what happened uh, in May of 2020. The civil unrest that followed there. Not a big surprise that there is now civil unrest in response to this case, but I don't think that should heighten the jurors' concern. I think it's probably the same as it was before. They all have a concern that they expressed and were very honest about, and so I'm not going to sequester them. We'll sequester them on Monday when we anticipate uh, doing closings. The jurors all are aware and were concerned about so he's looking to sequester them maybe next week uh they've asked to be sequestered they've asked to be sequestered because they don't feel safe as a judge that should be your first priority right the safety of the jury because the jury in a jury trial are integral to the in the um integrity of the court i don't think you can get i think the listen in my opinion the jury in a jury trial are more important than the judge they're more important than the prosecutor and the defender with the exception of the accused themselves and if there's a victim the victim 
The jury is pretty far up there, a uh, close second. Because that is the fabric of our justice system. A trial where you are found either guilty or not guilty by your peers, by fellow citizens. It works. Is it perfect? No. Is anything perfect? No. But it's a damn sight better than what they want. What do you think they would do with Chauvin? Forget court case. Let's say the mob got hold of him. Forget the fact that Floyd had fentanyl in his system and it looked like that's what um, actually finished him off. What do you think they would do to, to Chauvin? He'd be lynched. That's the society they want. A society where they can do that to you for any reason, at any time of the day or night. They could just turn up at your house and do what they want. That's why the jury's scared. Because they don't want these people turning up on their doorsteps like they do to everyone. Look at that soldier. It happened to him. When he told that um, pervy guy to leave the neighbourhood. The mob descended and him and his family have had to flee the house because no one will stand with him. And, he and protect him like he tried to protect the community. I see it so many times. I really do. Anyway, look, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, let me know what you guys think about the situation. Uh, if you haven't yet, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and share this video around. It's more important now than ever that we do these things because YouTube is doing a very good job of sidelining, reducing, what they call it, which is just a fancy word for shadow banning, um, commentary channels, conservative people, the one has gone. I will start up my bit shoot again. Uh, it's still there. I just haven't made any videos for it for a while. But I will do now. Um, and Rumble. And I might look into Odyssey or DLive or something. Because these are going to be the places to go when YouTube destroys itself. Which it looks like it's doing. Um, anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.